Today I'm going to show you how to install the Tor browser on Kali Linux. Normally it's really simple to install the Tor browser. All you pretty much have to do is just download it and then open it. But there are a couple caveats with installing it in Kali and I'll go over this. First we need to open IceWeasel. IceWeasel is a web browser. It's actually I think based off of Firefox. From there we're going to go to the Tor or to torproject.org. That's T O R P-R-O-J-E-C-T dot org. Click on the big download button and this will take you to the page where you can actually pick the version that you need. It actually should automatically pick for you as long as you're opening it up from within Kali. It'll automatically select the Linux um, option. So download this and save it to your hard drive. Now we need to open up Terminal to extract the downloaded uh, tar file. Go ahead and change to whatever directory you downloaded the Tor browser bundle into. Now to extract it, type tar, T-A-R, space, dash, X-V-F, and then space, and then the name of the file you downloaded. Um, in case you didn't know, if you start to type in the first few letters and then hit tab, it should autocomplete. Um, if there's more than one item that starts with those letters, you can either type more or you can hit tab a couple times to see the different uh, file names that are, that are available. Alright, so once this is extracted, you can open it up and uh, I'm going to actually show you what the problems are. Normally, in other systems, you would just be able to click the Start Tor Browser and it would all work fine. However, since Kali you're running as under root, it's going to give you this error. Um, that's just basically saying it should be run under root. So we're going to have to open up the file, and we're just going to have to bypass that error. So, there's a couple different ways to do it. You can just change this 0 to a 1, and then the error won't occur. Or you can have it so the error pops up, but it doesn't exit by removing the exit 1. On previous versions of the Tor browser bundle, this would be all you needed to have it working. However, I ran into a problem where it, it just kept restarting or, or failing to start. And um, it took a little bit more work to figure out what the problem was. So what I ended up doing was just running it from terminal so that I could see uh, the output and any warnings, etc. And as you can see here, there are a couple um, warnings. It looks like the first warning that we run into is the problem saying that uh, the files that it's trying to access are not owned by the user that we are, a root user in this case. So what you want to do is make sure you're in the directory that contains the Tor browser files. Then type chown, chown, space, dash capital R for recursive, that means it's going to apply this to all the files down through the different folders. Space root, um, and obviously that's the username that we want to set these to. And then just uh, space star so that it hits all the files in there. Press enter, and that should do it. Now if we start it up, everything starts fine. Um, that's all there is to it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you don't like it, give it a thumbs up anyway. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to address them. I'm going to show you how to perform a low bandwidth denial of service attack that is quite effective against um, a, a large amount of uh, websites, mostly Apache host machine, the victim machine. If I actually refresh Apache, <laughs> it it's not even coming up. I didn't do it quick enough. Today I'm going to show you how to brute force a uh, website login using Hydra. There's the IP address for the host, the login name is root, and the password is 557. So if I go back to the form, root, and then 557, sign in, and that's it. Very simple. One thing that might be helpful if you are trying to mitigate against this type of an attack would be today I'm going to walk you through how to install Kali on VirtualBox. 
Uh, Kali is a penetration testing operating system. You'll want to open VirtualBox and create a new virtual machine. I'm selecting to use the encrypted drive just because it has a few more steps in the setup process and the login in process so that I can document it. This is the login screen. Your username is root, R-O-O-T, and the password is the password that you entered when you first installed Kali. 